Hello and welcome. My name is John Mead. I'm the Eugene McDermott Master Teacher of Science at the St. Mark's School of Texas in Dallas. And if you're here and you've found this, you're interested in the Rising Star Expedition here in September of 2017. This video is something that will hopefully help you learn a little bit about the background of Homo Naledi, how we know what we know about Naledi so far, and give you and those who are interested a chance to uh, see how we got here so you can have a little bit more background on this very interesting expedition that the team is embarking on. So let's go and take a look at how this story got started, shall we? It starts actually in 2013 in South Africa, just outside of Johannesburg. You can see just to the northwest of Johannesburg, there's an area called the Cradle of Humankind. It's a place where the study of early human fossils started in Africa and has continued since the 1920s. And the Rising Star Cave is one of the most well-known caves, not for fossils, but actually for learning how to cave in South Africa. If you're a South African caver, chances are you learned in the Rising Star Cave at some point. And the folks who start our story here are Stephen Tucker on the left there and Rick Hunter on the right. They are members of the South African caving community and they love exploring places that most of us would be terrified to go into. They have a particular joy of very tight spots and seeing how far and how deep they can go in caves. And they were in the Rising Star Cave one day in um, in September of 2013 when they basically got to the end of, of the rope and they um, thought, okay, we're, we're done. We're, we've got to the end of the map, if you will. And they then happened to see a little crack that was literally no more than about 8 to 10 inches wide. And they were able to squeeze down there, and that turned out to be a drop of almost 30 feet that led them down into a chamber. And when they got into the chamber, they saw something amazing. And here to give you an idea of what, what they were in, this is part of the Rising Star Cave. It's really much larger than this little image shows. But they had gone in, they had gone through a place called the Superman's Crawl, and up uh, the better part of 30 feet up a... Uh, a risky rocky ridge called Dragon's Back and then you can see they drop down through what we call now the chute which is that narrow you know eight inch or so uh, wide gap and then put them into the chamber where they made an amazing discovery of fossils they go into this chamber and they're just lying on the floor our bones clearly human-like bones and if you look carefully now with my cursor you can see there's a jawbone. We have some long bones here. Um, this little part here looks like it could be part of a skull. So they were excited and they knew that in Johannesburg there was a um, paleontologist, paleoanthropologist, someone who studies early humans um, named Dr. Lee Berger. So they brought the fossils to him and showed him pictures like this of that jawbone and he realized immediately that this was a very special find these were not modern human bones they were clearly ancient and they were in a place that really didn't make a whole lot of sense because it was such a hard spot to get into but he realized from looking at the bones that the condition of the bones as well as the humidity in the cave and the like that these bones needed to be gotten out of there quickly if they were going to be saved for scientific purposes and for us to learn what they really were and so he then did a remarkable thing he put out an ad on Facebook and here you can see it says dear colleagues I need the help of the whole community and for you to reach out to as many related professional groups as possible and then we need and I'm going to paraphrase here they were looking for a few individuals with excellent skills that could get these fossils out of this very, very 
narrow spot in the cave. And I love this. The catch is person must be skinny, preferably small, not be claustrophobic, fit, should have caving experience, climbing experience as a bonus. They should work in cramped quarters, have a good attitude, and be a team player. And he doesn't expect to get many people. I mean, how many people are there who have the skill set to do this? And the assumption was very few. Turns out over 50 people applied, narrowed that down to 11 folks, and then did Skype interviews with them. Um, eventually, narrowing it down to these six individuals, a group that became known as the Underground Astronauts, because the scientists who are running the Rising Star Expedition, Dr. Berger, and you'll soon meet Dr. Hawks, they had no ability to get down into this tiny crevice. But these six young women had the skill set and the ability to get down there. And from left to right, we have Becca Pichotto, Aliyah Gertoff, Ellen Farragill, Marina Elliott, Lindsay Hunter, and Hannah Morris. And they became the ones that did all of the excavating over the month of November. Dr. Berger enlisted Dr. John Hawks from the University of Wisconsin to be kind of second in command. And Dr. Hawks is a world famous paleoanthropologist himself. So he was an excellent choice to join. And the team spent the better part of the month of November 2013 going in and out of the cave down into what we now call the Dinaletti Chamber, working to get those bones out, and they excavated an area the size of basically a card table, less than one meter by one meter by about a third of a meter deep. So not very deep at all, not, not very big, and that small area became the most productive fossil spot in all of Africa for human fossils. And here, when they were done, they had over 1,500 human fossils of a species that they didn't know what it was. So what do you do when you have, you know, a huge cache of fossils like that? Well, it was going to take a long time and lots of labor to figure out what they had. Now, one thing I was lucky about is as a teacher here in Texas, Dr. Berger live tweeted the whole expedition. And so I was here in Dallas with my students and we followed along and I realized very quickly that we needed to record this for for posterity and for history. So I created what we have come to call the Twitter play-by-play -play of that. And that's available on my blog at bluelionphotos.blogspot.com. I also was able to go back later in 2015 and interview most of the members of the team. And if you want to see those in-depth interviews, they're also on my blog there. But the analysis of all of these 1,500 plus fossils came to a, a group where Dr. Berger said, let's bring in the best, brightest young minds in the field of paleoanthropology. And they spent a month in Johannesburg in April of 2014 working um, with the bones, getting a sense of what they were, what they weren't, and writing, beginning to write up the scientific papers. And then in September of 2015, less than two years after the bones had been discovered, the world was introduced to Homo naledi. Um, naledi means star in local language. And it was the cover of National Geographic, Scientific American. Um, the news broke on the night of September 10th, and everyone, um, all the major news organizations carried it. It was a fantastic thing. Discover Magazine called it the number two science story of the year after the Pluto flyby of the New Horizons mission. And what did we get from that? It was really an amazing cache of fossils. Over 15 individuals were represented. Um, some great skulls, as you can see here on the left. Um, hands and feet, multiple hands and feet that were complete or very nearly complete, which was unheard of in the hominin fossil record before that. And now we have many examples of it, and from all ages and both 
sexes. And when you look at the species, here are a few quick things you see, the, the more modern features, things that are like us, Homo, the genus that we belong to. The skull looks very modern um, in shape, although it's very small, which is primitive, um, about the size of an orange, uh, so about a, a less than half the size of yours and mine. Hands look very, uh, very modern, and so could they have used tools? Quite possibly. Uh, we have no evidence of tool making with them. We have yet to find any tools associated with the bones. The legs are very human-like. They are long, unlike ape legs, which would be shorter. Um, suggests a very modern way of locomoting, of moving. Feet are, with very few minor exceptions, almost exactly like yours and mine. But it's not a modern human. This is not a modern human because it also has very primitive features. These are the Australopith features. Uh, the shoulders look very ape-like, almost like a gibbons. Uh, very good for um, hanging from trees and climbing, giving a lot more movement and flexibility than our shoulders do. The pelvis you see is flared, comes out a little bit more. That's more primitive, a little bit more ape-like. And then um, the fingers, while the hands are very modern, the fingers are long and curved, and that is, again, an adaptation for climbing. So this, the world was excited to see this, what we call a mosaic of features, some primitive, some modern. But the thing that got everybody's attention is basically, what was Homo naledi doing in this cave? And if you remember this image, you're dealing with these creatures being in this fossil site that takes modern humans with all of their gear 45 minutes or so to get there. So how did they do it at some obvious prehistoric time? There was no date known at this point, so we didn't know if these were 100,000 years old or, you know, 3 million years old. Um, that was certainly something that we're going to find out later. But how did, how did the bones get in there? And the team was very interested in this because it was the mystery of all mysteries in this particular expedition. And to put the pieces together, we start off, there were 15 individuals. Remember, they were found in an area the size of a card table. Infants to the elderly, all age ranges. Both males and females were there. If you look at these bones, and this is one of my favorite Dr. Berger quotes, these are the healthiest dead things you've ever seen. So we don't know what killed them. There was nothing obvious. They did not seem to die of trauma or being eaten by animals and the like. You had the hands and the feet were articulated. They were intact. And that never happens in um, in fossil situations. Scavengers get to bones and the small bones of the hands and feet get scattered very easily. But these were clearly um, intact. There was no predator damage. Um, no hyenas or lions or Pretty much anything had gnawed on these bones. The bones were surprisingly pristine from that perspective. There was no evidence that the bones had been moved by like a flash flood coming through the cave or anything. Um, again, these uh, lots of these bones were in, intact and articulated, so there was no evidence that they had moved since they had been deposited. All of the dirt and sediments in this Dinaletti chamber um, came from within the chamber. There was no evidence of debris and stuff coming from outside the cave, um, suggesting that there had never been an easy, easy access to the this chamber. We also didn't find any tools, debris, what I like to call paleo trash. This was not a place these people were living. It didn't have their garbage or their stone tools or whatever they might have been using in their day-to-day -day life. Um, just Homo naledi bones. And that goes to say there were no other species here other than some small, a couple of teeth from uh, some mice and um, the uh, bones of a very modern um, owl wing. But other than that, um, no other species, and that's unheard of. So the big question came, where would we find such a situation here in the modern world? Um, it, it puzzled people because they had to have gotten here somehow. And... They basically went and they ruled out all the other things. You know, was it were they trapped in the cave somehow? Uh, no, you rule that out because the bones clearly came there over 
a long period of time over many years. Um, you know, the predator issue gets wiped out. So all of these things are ruled out, um, and you're left with the only thing and the only situation you find in humans, um, in modern times where all these things would be the case is in a graveyard. And so that led the team to propose the hypothesis, very controversial, that this was ritualized body disposal, that these bodies were put there intentionally for what reason we can't speculate, but um, they were put there repeatedly. So it was a ritual. Um, but for what reason were these creatures with a brain the size of an orange doing this? Um, and how were they able to get into such a dark space in the cave? Um, something the team is working on, trying to nullify their own hypothesis to get a better answer there. If you're interested in more about the Rising Star Expedition from 2013, two great resources. Uh, Nova and PBS have a two-hour video, The Dawn of Humanity. Excellent. And then Dr. Berger and Dr. Hawks put out a book, Almost Human, which tells the story in much more detail than I'm doing in this quick video. But there's something else. The team also discovered a second location at the very end of the dig in 2013 where there were other bones. So over the next two years, on a much smaller scale, they went and visited this other part of the cave, which is, if you notice, the Dinaletti chamber takes you off to the right here in this area. Um, to get to what we call the Lassetti chamber, you come down here off to the left, um, and you can see there are ups and downs. It's a tricky thing to get to, um, much like the Dinaletti chamber. And they found three individuals there. Um, a child, an infant, um, a little bit of a second adult, and then a very complete skeleton of an adult male. They nicknamed him Neo. And here is his skull and his skeleton, um, comparable in completeness to the famous Lucy skeleton. And so Neo got lots of attention, and that was announced in May here of 2017. So they announced that. They also announced the dating of the original Homo naledi bones. And this surprised everybody. They came back as being between 236,000 and 335,000 years old. So they're very young. And so that suggests, of course, that we have a reasonably primitive hominin existing alongside modern humans in South Africa at that time. So that opens up a lot of uh, questions for us. And that leads us to where we are today. Questions need to be answered. We need to understand more about Homo naledi. So the team has largely been reconvened, and they are headed down to explore both the Dinaledi and the Lassetti chambers here in September of 2017. I'll be creating uh, videos on a regular basis to fill you in on what they're doing and, and kind of a daily update, if you will. But one of the great things, because we want science to be open to everybody, teachers in their classes can actually join um, Google Hangouts with the team as they excavate. And this is going to be opened up courtesy of National Geographic's um, Explorer Classroom and if you go to Nat Geo Education's YouTube channel, um, you can join up with the team. There'll be three dates, September 7th, 14th, and the 21st. Um, and you get to actually see what's going on live and talk with the scientists. Um, just a, an amazing example, something that is never done otherwise. And then for people who want to follow things live as it's live tweeted, um, Dr. Berger, again, with the spirit of Let's let the world in on all this. Um, you can follow him at, at Lee R. Berger, Dr. Hawks at, at John Hawks. They do a great job of tweeting throughout the day. You can follow my um, Twitter feed. I'm at Evo underscore Explorer. Of course, National Geographic will be supporting this and at National Geographic. The Explorer Classroom is being set up by group Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants. Um, they're well worth following. And then the hashtag, of course, Explorer Classroom, Homo Naledi, and hashtag Rising Star Expedition. If you follow those, you'll get 
lots of coverage directly from the team. I'd like to thank Dr. Berger, Dr. Hawks, Ellen Fergal, and National Geographic for providing me use of their images in this to share with you. And I will be continuing to provide more of these videos for you on a regular basis. So thanks a lot and look forward to seeing you uh, as part of the expedition.